Tonight on Y News. Sick and elderly residents in need of medical attention endure congestion in evacuation centers in Batangas. The government ensures readiness for a massive relocation of residents should Taal Volcano Island be declared a no man's island. Toll plazas waves toll for vehicles transporting relief items to areas devastated by Taal Volcano's eruption. And Taal evacuees show off their fashion sense out of donated clothes. Good evening. Some evacuees in Batangas chose to stay outside the evacuation center, while several temporary shelters have closed their doors, refusing to accommodate more evacuees. Mac Cordova will explain why. The Provincial Disaster Risk Reduction Management Office of Batangas has recorded at least 125,000 evacuees in different evacuation areas in the province. Some evacuation centers have either closed their doors or are refusing to accept more displaced individuals and families to avoid congestion. In the town of Santo Tomas, 9 of 11 evacuation centers are closed as of today. Congestion brings inconvenience especially to the children, elderly, and the sick. Just like Salvacion Hamora who has been enduring an illness. The problem, she says, is lack of water supply aside from waiting in the line wanting to use the toilet. Domingo Vilostas, on the other hand, is suffering from gout. He is bedridden and endures pain in the knees. Born, raised, and grew old in Talisay, Batangas. Zenaida Anelio and Apolinario Mayoga have accepted that due to the natural calamity that hit them, perhaps there's no more house nor livelihood to return to. Ayun nga, yun ang masaklak sa aming buhay kung saan kami ipapadpad. Dahil talaga ining nung ngayon lang namin naranasan yung putok na yun ng vulkan na kami naliligo ng putik. Nakaapat na lipat kami bago kami napapunta din sa takot namin. Para man ang mangyayari sa amin, siyempre, tanggap, tanggap na din namin yun. Ang pinagpapasalamat ko naman ay bagamang gano'n ang nangyayari sa aming bayan at talaga namang madaming nasuporta uh, sa aming mga biktima ng Volcan Taal. In Batanga City, some old persons and families who have difficulty in breathing just opt to stay outside Batanga's provincial sports complex because of congestion. Some of the old people who have difficulty in walking due to stroke were accompanied by the UNTV news team to have a checkup. One of them is 63-year-old Marcelo Amo from Taal Town. His wife said Marcelo feels discomfort because of too much heat inside the sports complex. Nasa maalasan niya doon, mainit. Nainitan. Natutuwa siya manuo ng maraming tao. Raquel Legaspi was visited by a doctor to check her health condition. The 59-year-old from Lemri finds it hard to walk because of her illnesses. As of this morning, some 5,000 displaced individuals are taking shelter under the roof of Batanga Sports Complex. The Provincial Welfare and Development, meanwhile, is transporting the other evacuees to evacuation centers in Batanga City. Mac Cordova, UNTV News and Rescue. The government ensures its readiness for massive resettlement of residents amid the Al Volcano eruption crisis. Meanwhile, the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council assures it can sustain and aid for calamity hit residents despite a budget cut. Rosalicos has the details why. If the Taal Volcano Island is declared a no-man's land, hundreds of families living in the area will lose their homes. According to reports, President Rodrigo Duterte has approved the recommendation of his cabinet to declare the island where the second most active volcano in the country lies, a permanent danger zone. I believe that uh, 
we should, uh, I strongly believe, or uh, recommend that uh, we strictly implement the suggestion or the recommendation that the, uh, the Tal Island will be the declared no man's land. If there will be another explosion, uh, more violent, I think all people there will perish in that island. So we'll have to depend heavily on... I know that you uh, you cannot make projections actually, Dito. And there's, an, there's, a, there's a, an activity there which can be seen visually. Or manifest itself with the film. According to Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development Secretary Eduardo del Rosario, the government is prepared for a massive resettlement. This is if the local government units will have the capacity to provide pieces of land for relocation. Uh, ready to assist if there will be a need for massive resettlement, provided the LGUs can give us the lots where the uh, people will be is actually in all interventions ang uh, number one problem is availability of residential lands meanwhile although the national disaster risk reduction council or ndrmc's fund was slashed from 20 billion pesos in 2019 to 16 billion pesos this year the council still says that amount is enough to sustain the needs of calamity affected residents this is although it is only the first quarter of the fiscal year 2020 and no one is sure of what other calamities will hit the country pero makakaasa pa rin po ang ating mga kababayan na kung ano ang ang pondo na, na isinantabi ng pamahalaan, binadget ng pamahalaan, nilaan ng pamahalaan para sa atin. Gagamitin po natin yan sa pinakamagaling na paraan upang magkasya ito sa mga pangangailangan ng mga kababayan natin. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. As thousands of residents from Batangas flee their homes due to the Taal Volcano eruption, the government assures there are plans to set in place to address their needs. Meanwhile, Senator Grace Post strengthens her call to create a new department, department of Disaster Management, but another senator opposes. Arlene Delgado explains why. As Taal Volcano's hazardous eruption looms, thousands of families have been taking refuge in hundreds of evacuation centers outside the 14-kilometer danger zone. But should the all volcanoes unrest persist for days or months, what are the government's plan for affected communities? The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council or NDRRMC says food and non-food items for the evacuees should not be a problem as they have sufficient supply prepositioned in every local government unit. The agency will also use its emergency procurement fund to replenish stocks. As for temporary shelters for evacuees, the NGRRMC says it is open to suggestions of putting up tent cities. However, there is no plan yet on where to relocate residents outside the danger zone who might be affected should there be an event of a major explosive eruption of the Taal volcano. NDRRMC spokesperson Mark Timbal explains they are focusing on evacuating all residents within the 14-kilometer danger zone. Technically, lahat naman ng evacuation sites natin, maaabot yan ng ash fall. Pero yung ating um, base surge, yung projectiles, yung ballistic projectiles, as well as the, expect, uh, the possible tsunami that might be encountered, within the 14-kilometer danger zone lang yan. The NDRRMC clarifies there was no detailed plan yet on the restoration and rehabilitation efforts for the affected areas because there is a need to assess the extent of damages first. We're still in the middle of the response phase kasi hindi tayo makapag uh, deploy ng ating mga assessment teams. Bakit? Kasi danger zone yun eh. Pag naigawa na itong comprehensive report of damages na to at yung mga needs ng mga communities na yan for rehabilitation, saka natin gagawin yung, yung plan. The NDRRMC, which functions under the Office of Civil Defense, spearheads the disaster response and management by acting as a coordinating council of various government agencies, which are members of the response cluster headed by the DSWD. However, Senator Grace Poe is pushing for the creation of a new department that will focus on mitigation and disaster response, the Department of Disaster Resilience and Emergency Management. But Senator Pan Filolaxon believes 
there was no need for a new department, as it would be difficult to transfer personnel from one department to another, not to mention the allotment of budget. The NDRRMC, for its part, is open to the proposal. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Metro Manila Police aims to collect a total of not less than 2.5 million pesos coming from their own combat duty pay, while their senior officers are willing to give more. Lea Ilagan details why. National Capital Region Police Office personnel will donate not 10 pesos but 100 pesos for the survivor of the Taal Volcano eruption. National Capital Region Police Office Acting Director, Police Brigadier General De Boltzina says the 100 peso donation will be deducted from each of their members' 3,000 pesos monthly combat duty pay given by President Rodrigo Duterte. But NCRPO senior officers are willing to give the whole amount of their combat duty pay amounting to 3,000 pesos. The NCRPO's aim is to collect a total of not less than 2.5 million pesos. And that is the effort of uh, NCRPO to help and assist uh, uh, the evacuees of the Taal volcano eruptions. The more than 500 personnel of the Metro Manila Police also affected by the earthquakes due to Taal volcano's activities are not included in the collection. Instead, each of them will receive 10,000 peso financial assistance. Meanwhile, a more than 1,000 strong reactionary standby support force or RSSF from Camp Krame have been deployed in Cavite and Batanga since this morning. Chief Directorial Staff Police Lieutenant General Guillermo Eliasar says the RSSF personnel will serve as temporary replacement of their comrades from police caliber zone who have been duty since Sunday. Mga police natin nagbabantay doon since nitong uh, simula ng linggong ito, eh meron din silang mga uh, meron silang mga kamag-anak at meron kapamilya na naapektuhan din ng kalamidad dahil doon nga sila nakasign, doon rin sila nakatira most of them. Kaya nga mas maganda na halinin muna ito ng mga tropa natin coming from NHQ para sila naman ay makabalik sa kanilang mga bayan at pamilya at matulungan naman. Aside from carrying their firearms, the RSSF are wearing protective items like face masks and goggles. They are given 500 peso food allowance per day. The RSSF police will perform their duty in affected areas for three days to be replaced come Monday. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue, Com Krame. Vehicles transporting relief items to areas devastated by the recent volcanic eruption may pass by the South Luzon Expressway and the Skyway without pay toll. Meanwhile, the Department of Transportation assures readiness to transport residents in case of a major volcanic eruption. Joan Nano tells us why. Government vehicles transporting relief items in areas affected by volcanic eruption won't have to pay for toll when passing through the South Luzon Expressway, Skyway and Star Toll Plaza, effective beginning today. According to SMC Tollways President and CEO Manuel Bunoan, the operator of the said expressways, all government vehicles bringing relief goods for the evacuees in Batangas, Cavite, and other hardly hit areas will be exempted from paying toll. They just have to use their authorized or marked government vehicles in order for the tellers in the toll plazas to easily identify them. As part of our uh, well, so, uh, corporate social responsibility naman in times so, of mga calamities like this, lalong lalo na yung uh, mga uh, vehicles and equipment of government agencies that are involved dun sa relief uh, rehabilitation efforts dun sa areas uh, affected by the Taal Volcano. Uh, we accommodate them actually para ma-facilitate po yung travel nila dito sa, sa, sa expressways going south that uh, we accommodate them na uh, maging uh, give them Free, no? SMC Tollways Head also explains that private car owners may also be exempted from paying tolls. All they have to do is to coordinate with the SMC Tollways office to inform them on their relief operations. 
They may call SMC hotline number at 318-8655 or send an email at dpo-star at star.sanmiguel.com.ph. As of now, SMC Tollways has yet to impose free toll for all in the event of a major volcanic eruption as the concessionaires have to decide on it. Meanwhile, the entire forces of the Transportation Department is on alert in the event of a major volcanic eruption. According to DOTR Assistant Secretary for Special Concerns, Manny Gonzalez, as of now, 12 buses and trucks are in standby within the areas surrounding the Taal Volcano for the immediate evacuation of the residents in case of an emergency. Sa plano po namin is dadagdagan pa namin yung mga currently naka-standby dito ng mga buses and trucks for emergency. Nakaantabay rin po kami doon, lalong-lalo na po yung Philippine Coast Guard na nagdagdag na rin po sila ng manpower at saka yung mga water asset nila po dito for evacuation. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Kalaokan City. Filipinos can always find humor while in a difficult situation. They are the kind of people who will seize the opportunity to escape situations in life, even if just for a short moment. Just like our kababayans in Matangas, who decided to laugh off their worries and show off their passion their fashion skills. Let's watch this. Residents of Batangas who fled their homes after the Taal Volcano erupted last Sunday are temporarily staying at the designated evacuation areas. Many of them barely brought anything that's why they are now relying on the relief efforts of various groups. And since clothes are among the essentials or one of the basic needs of a human being, many evacuees rush to get some once the donations arrive. Hilarious photos of evacuees dressed up in old or pre-used clothes showing off their modeling skills are now making rounds on social media. This man looked refreshing in his pink bathrobe and towel on his head after taking a shower. This group of young men are like dashing debonair wearing long sleeve shirts and coat. But it seems these three had no other choice but to be dressed like their mothers just to protect their bodies from the harmful effects of the ash fall. This grandma felt like she went back in time and reminisced her camping days when she wore this Girl Scout outfit. And no, these men are not part of President Rodrigo Duterte's entourage, but they are simply sporting the look of the presidential security guards. And since looting is reportedly rampant nowadays in Batangas, it looks like these guys would be perfect to guard any town or village. Oh my, these men seem to be enjoying their time in schoolgirls' uniforms. But as the saying goes, any help or donation, no matter how big or small, will be deeply appreciated and is much needed. Filipinos are known for resiliency and always being positive, even in times of calamities and catastrophes. And despite what happened to the Batangueños, they are still hopeful and always thankful for being alive and safe. Welcome back to Y News. We pick up to where Angelo Castro III left off. I am William Theo, and here are the headlines. A Batangas official says that some Taal residents may be allowed to go home in two weeks if Taal Volcano's activity continues to decline. The worth of damages to agriculture caused by the Taal eruption reaches 3 billion pesos. Department of Labor and Employment to hire 6,000 government interns in Taal Volcano affected areas. And restaurant owners in Cavite lend their helping hand to Taal eruption hit residents. Some Taal residents may return home when the alert level is downgraded by authorities monitoring the activities of the Taal Volcano. These residents say despite the distress they are now experiencing, they are hopeful there is still room for recovery. 
Asher Kadapan Jr. tells us why. Taal Volcano's activity has been generally characterized with weak emission of stream-laden plumes since this morning. According to data provided by the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, a total of five discrete weak explosions were recorded by Taal Volcano Network today. But despite a temporary decline in the volcanic activities, evacuated residents from some towns and barangays in Batangas are still prohibited from going back to their homes. In fact, members of the Philippine Coast Guard headed by Southern Tagalog Commander Commodore Leo Vigildo Panopio have been making rounds since yesterday in the towns of Agoncillo, Laurel, and Talisay, which were placed under total lockdown by the authorities due to massive damage caused by the Taal Volcano eruption. Based on the exclusive photos given to UNTV News by the PCG, some roads in Agoncillo are no longer passable due to severe damages caused by the earthquakes. Batangas Governor Mark Leviste has also met with FIVOX Director Renato Solidum recently. According to Vice Governor Leviste, Solidum said that if the volcano will continue to show signs of less activities, there is a possibility that residents will be allowed to return to their homes. Sa aming panayam kay Yusek Renato Solidum, uh, kung mananatiling kalmado ang Volcan Tal because it's calm uh, right about now, kung ito ay tatagal ng dalawang linggo, maaari na nalilang ibaba ang alert level, hopefully to 3 or number 2. That way, um, people can uh, go back to their regular lives and the uh, government can start rebuilding, uh, rehabilitating um, all damaged Relief efforts for displaced families continue. Marami po kaming natatanggap dito at saka sa pagkain po yung sagana. Nakakabawas naman ang kaunting problema. <laughs> Nakakapagpanigaya po kahit kami ay merong nalulungkot sa aming kalooban dahil ang aming paghahanap buhay namin ay hindi kami makapaghanap buhay. Meanwhile, the PCG conducted a free medical mission to check on the status of the evacuees' health. Yung tawag sa amin dito ay maraming may sakit na mga bata, malamig, tapos iba inuubo at may mga sipon. So we brought our Coast Guard doctors from uh, the headquarters kasama na yung Philippine Coast Guard Auxiliary at may mga dala rin kaming mga relief goods binigay ng mga personnel namin sa headquarters. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, Mataas na Kahoy, Batangas. Meanwhile, over 3 billion pesos worth of agricultural products have been damaged on the first week of Paal Volcano's eruption, according to the Department of Agriculture, or DA. So far, the eruption has affected 15,790 hectares of land and a total of 1,923 animal heads with an overall estimated value of 3.6 billion pesos. A big leap from the previous report of 50, 577 million. The latest report incorporated additional damage in Laguna and updated reports from Batangas and Cavite, which include high value crops that were destroyed, namely coffee, cacao, pineapple, assorted fruits and vegetables, rice, coconut, as well as provinces fisheries. The DA, however, is continuously assessing the affected areas for the impact of volcanic activities on marine life into a lake and animals in the volcano region. Based on the latest report, tilapia and milkfish culture incurred losses of up to 1.6 billion pesos worth, making fisheries the most affected commodity in terms of damage and losses. Heavy ashfall has been experienced for days in parts of Batangas and Cavite. According to an agronomist, the volcanic ash can be harmful to plants and crops. Harleen Delgado explains why. The non-stop ash fall due to the eruption of one of the country's active volcanoes has devastated parts of Batangas and Cavite. According to Dr. Aids Adalia, an agronomist, volcanic ash is harmful to plants and crops. It can burn the surface of plants as volcanic ashes are hot in nature. Heavy ash fall can also break and suffocate the plant. So yung stomata na yan, pag natabunan niya ng, ng ash, 
Oh, wala na, masusuffocate yung halaman. At pag nasuffocate yung halaman, ultimately, mamamatay. Dr. Adalia says, plants that have sturdy crops such as pineapple and papaya can still be saved as their lifespan for harvest can last up to one week. However, vegetables such as lettuce and eggplant may not be safe for consumption anymore, especially when ashes have already penetrated the leaves. Dr. Adalia advises to spray the affected plants and crops with water to wash off the ashes. Do not just wipe out the ash as it may scratch the surface of the plant as volcanic ash contains abrasive materials. Sturdy crops not heavily affected by the ash can still be saved and can be used for other purposes by peeling off their skin and washing them thoroughly. Ang, ang papaya medyo matagal-tagal yan, sturdy yan. Kung, kung pang tinola lang naman at pang atsara, eh pwede mong gamitin pa siguro yung mga two weeks na nandun at mahugasan. If volcanic ashes cause harm on plants, it's a different scenario for soil. Dr. Adalia says volcanic ash may do good to the soil as it contains nutrients that can improve soil condition. But too much volcanic ash could also harm the soil. Kasi pag naihalo mo yun sa, sa lupa, mm -hmm. gaganda yung texture ng soil. Mm -hmm. Tapos source siya ng mga nutrients. Okay. Mataba din yan eh. Kumbaga pataba din yan. To some extent, ang sulfur ay fungicidal. Makakakontrol yan ng sakit ng mga fungicide, ng mga fungus. Pero hindi yung ganong karae, hindi yung ganong kadami. The Department of Agriculture through the Bureau of Plant and Industry will distribute seedlings to the affected farmers, including 5,000 coffee mother plants and 1,000 cacao seedlings. For poultry animals and livestock, the DA advises the owners to secure them away from areas affected by the ash fall to prevent them from contracting respiratory diseases. President Rodrigo Duterte with the Agriculture Department earlier gave President Rodrigo Duterte with the Agriculture Department earlier gave initial assistance worth 160 million pesos to the affected farmers and fishermen. Harleen Delgado, UN TV News and Rescue, Quezon City. We often hear uncommon terms the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology uses whenever they give updates on the Taal Volcano's activities. Phreatic explosion, hydrocrastic density current, base surge. What do these words mean? Find out as Vincent Arboleda reports. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology continues to monitor the Taal Volcano's activities. Alert level 4 remains and may last for another week as it takes PVOLS 2 weeks to downgrade the level. Experts say, though the volcano's activities have calmed down, the volcano may just be storing energy for another major eruption. As the government continues to monitor the Taal volcano, it is important to be familiar with the terms related to volcanoes to avoid misinterpretation. For one, phreatic explosion also known as phreatic eruption, is steam-driven explosion that occurs when water beneath the ground or on the surface is heated by magma, lava, or hot rocks. The trembling of the ground due to volcanic activity is called volcanic earthquake. According to FIVOX, this is a result of continuous magma intrusion on the Taal edifice. Such may also result in fissures or cracks on the earth. Another term worth taking note of is pyroclastic density current or base surge. But you will see nagugulong siya pababa. Yan. Oh, oh pyroclastic density current yan. Oh, oh pyroclastic flow. Oh, oh so, yan. Tatawid siya sa dagat, pwede siyang gumapang. Okay? Pero pagdating sa taal, kung may lateral blast siya, eh mabilis yung tatawid sa, sa dagat. Kaya-kaya niya tawirin. When a volcano erupts, it spews pyroclastic materials. Pyroclastic, ibig na sabihin, basag, plastic means basag-basag na bahagi ng lava o di kaya ay mga lumang deposito na galing sa crater. An example of a pyroclastic material spewed by a volcano is ash, which, when it falls on the surface of the earth, creates a phenomenon called ash fall. When preparing for a calamity like a volcano eruption, 
it is important to know the terms used by authorities and experts so that the necessary preparations are made to preserve life. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue. The Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLE, announced it would be hiring 6,000 government interns from areas in Batangas affected by the eruption of Taal Volcano. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bellu III said the hiring of interns is under a government program which aims to provide temporary employment to affected residents and also help the local government units in the rehabilitation efforts. Under the program, 600 interns, each from affected areas, will be hired and sent to heavily affected areas. Dola said the interns will be engaged for a period of 30 days and will receive a salary of 12,050 pesos, which is equivalent to the prevailing minimum wage in the region. Applicants should have the following qualifications. 18 years old and above who must have no work experience or with intermittent work experience at least graduates of high school, senior high school, or its equivalent level under the alternative learning system, or graduates of a techno vocational course. The municipal government of Chaong in Quezon province wants evacuees from Batangas to be busybodies during their temporary stay in evacuation centers in the town. Mira Sola Bugadil will report why. The local government of Chaong Quezon wishes to help evacuees to spend their time in evacuation areas profitably. According to Celso de Grano, the officer in charge of the Municipal Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office, they will launch a cash-for-work program that will benefit the more than 2,000 evacuees that are housed in Chaong. Anticipate natin pa pwede sila magtagal dito. So... Sayang naman ang ititigil nila dito sa amin kung uh, maga ispumpid na lang natin. So mas maganda naman yun sila. Bukod doon sa sila yung magkakamayang additional income, ay magiging busy sila sa, sa buong maghapon. The jobs to be opened are sweeping the street and the clogging drainage among others. The Municipal Department of Social Welfare and Development is also studying the possibility of launching a livelihood program suitable for the evacuees. Pwede kami magawa ng isang proyekto na kung saan ay uh, in exchange of their services ay merong um, certain amount na pwedeng uh, bigay sa kala in a short time depende sa uh, kakayahan ng munisipyo. Students who are among the evacuees may sit in and attend classes in nearby schools so that they could continue studying. The MDRRMO assured they have sufficient supplies of relief goods and hygiene kits. Other establishments are prepared to open their doors for more evacuees that need temporary shelters. Mirasol Abogadil, UNTV News and Rescue. Inhaling air contaminated with hazardous gases and dust may be dangerous to one's health. Here are some easily available gadgets that can be used to be sure the air you are breathing is safe. Dante Amento reports. Face masks are currently in demand as protection from the hazardous ash fall due to the Taal volcano eruption. In fact, many pharmacies have run out of stock of face masks. This protective covering for the nose and the mouth is an essential especially after a volcanic eruption. Ang isa po pong mga organs na naapektuhan ay yung ating lungs. Nagkakaroon po tayo ng bronchitis due to the smoke, due to the ash fall. But aside from protective masks, there are other equipment that can be used to ensure the air is safe for breathing. One is an air purifier. It automatically cleans the air and removes dangerous gases, allergens, and other pollutants. It also captures tiny particles of the air, including bacteria, pollen, and allergy causing hair from animals or pets. It can filter even 0.1 micron particulates. It means even very tiny particles cannot pass through it. There are air sterilizers that also remove airborne bacteria, viruses, fungi, and other contaminants. There's also a wearable USB type personal negative ion generator and air purifier. It is efficient for removing smoke particles like those from cigarette smoke and hazardous dust. It can decrease airborne viruses in just a few minutes. There are many other gadgets useful to protect our respiratory health. To be sure of their efficiency, it is best to consult health experts. The DOH adds, dirty air is risky not only for the respiratory organs, 
but also for other parts of the body such as the eyes. Marami pong naapektuhan na mga organs sa ating katawan, yung ating mata, magkakaroon po ng irritation, magkakaroon po ng uh, patuloy sa pagkakaroon ng conjunctivitis. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue. Some businessmen in Cavite did not open their restaurants for business today. Their guests were not tourists but residents in danger zones after the Taal Volcano's eruption last Sunday. Jun Soriao tells us why. Water has been scarce nowadays in several barangays in Tagaytay City. This as power remains cut off in the area of water district's pumping stations. They have been enduring five days of scant water supply because the place where they can fetch water from is not a stone throw away. Residents rely on the local government's ration or water given by charitable fellow men. Just like Rick Manolo, owner of a small restaurant who did not open his establishment for business due to limited tourist arrivals in the city. He opted to deliver water for residents living in the danger zone instead. Eh, nakakaawa naman yung mga kababayan natin sa Tagaytay na walang ma-inom, ma-saing. Another restaurant owner, Lulu Bron, also fed the residents in need. Lulu recounts she was only 14 years old when Mount Pinatubo erupted less than three decades ago. Her experience as a teen prompted her to extend a helping hand to those in need because she knows what it feels like to be in distress, she adds. Actually, sir, mas grabe pa yung naranasan namin compared dito sa atin. Kasi doon sa Pampanga dati, sir, is lahar talaga siya. Tutubig na may putik. Eh, unlike ko dito, di ba ashfall lang, mga simple lang po. Lulu's group will continue to their charitable deed on Sunday for the calamity-stricken towns in Batangas. Jun Suriao, UNTV, News and Rescue, Tagaytay City. In times of calamity and emergencies, we call different government agencies for help. But there's a piece of advice straight from the Bible as to who to call upon for protection. Nina Armilio reports. Before a calamity strikes, it's always advisable to be prepared for what might happen next. The government and its various agencies have disaster preparedness measures and plans set in place for the safety and welfare of the citizens. Just like the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council and its provincial and municipal levels. The Philippine National Police and the Armed Forces of the Philippines who are ready to give a helping hand. The Department of Health and the Department of Social Welfare and Development mandated to secure the health and welfare of Filipinos and other agencies who perform their own tasks. Not only these groups, but also each one of us must always carry an alert mind, discipline to follow regulations and warnings, and care for other people. It is also important to take note of the contact numbers of the police office, fire stations, and nearby hospitals in times of need, aside from family and friends. But to whom must we always call upon during a time of distress? This is the advice of Brother Eli Soriano, the overall servant of Members Church of God International. And ang atin pong kalagayan ngayon para po tayong nasa isang mundo na parang wala nang safe na lugar. Ang alam ko na lang na safe na lugar na matatakbuhan natin yung ating pagtitiwala sa Diyos. Sa Kawikaan 18.10 Ang pangalan ng Panginoon ay matibay na muog, tinatakbuhan ng matwid at naliligtas. Ang matatakbuhan mo lang ngayon na kung saan ka mayroong protection ay ang pangalan ng Panginoon. Brother Eli also emphasizes it is high time for everyone to learn the words of God and to live the reason for our existence. Kaya po, napakaganda na mga, mga kababayan na tayo mag-aral ng mga salita ng Diyos kung ayaw na ng buong mundo kahit man lang ilan-ilan na mga tao ay gumunita tayo sa Diyos 
dahil para naman tayo mailigtas doon sa mga dumarating na yan, mga kalamidad, mga iba-iba po yung mga panganib ngayon sa ating panahon. Yang terorismo, mga kalamidad, mga drug cartel, yung mga, yung mga drug syndicate. Sana ipag-adya ng Diyos tayong mga nakakaalaala pa sa Kanya sa mga bagay na yan. Ito po ang dahil ng ating pagkalalang, mga kababayan. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. And to complete the most significant news for this day, Y News continues. Here are the top stories. President Rodrigo Duterte has pronounced the appointment of PNP OIC Police Lieutenant General Archie Francisco Gamboa as the regular PNP chief. Meanwhile, Interior Secretary Eduardo Año welcomes the designation of General Gamboa as CPNP. According to Año, he is very qualified for the job and expects him to work hard and lead the organization in its intensified fight against illegal drugs, criminality, communist terrorist groups, and extremists. The PNP assures the public that the PNP remains committed to its duty and to vigorously pursue internal cleansing to weed the ranks of rogue cops, all towards winning back the trust and confidence of the people. Meanwhile, President Duterte approves the total deployment ban of overseas Filipino workers in Kuwait, and not only of household service, but also of skilled workers. This after Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III recommendations following the heinous crime committed against OFW Janine Villavende by her Kuwaiti employers. Recently, the autopsy report of the National Bureau of Investigation shows that Villavende was sexually abused and brutally beaten to death. The circumstance the Kuwaiti government was attempting to hide when it gave a general autopsy report which indicated trauma and bruises caused her death, the palace adds. Malacanang says the chief executive is for the total ban in until the memorandum of agreement between the two countries is fully implemented and the terms are, are in every contract of the OFWs. And for the news abroad, a second person has died in China from a new pneumonia-like virus local officials have announced. They say the death was recorded in the eastern city of Wuhan, where the outbreak began in December. Yesterday, Japan confirmed its first case of the virus, the second country outside China after Thailand to do so. The disease has been identified as a coronavirus, which can cause illnesses ranging from common colds to the potentially deadly SARS. The new virus has infected dozens of people and many cases have been linked to a fish market in Wuhan as the market was closed on the 1st of January. A dog trained to track down animals has been helping Australian forest guards find koalas in danger amid the huge bushfires raging the land and claiming the lives of the millions of animals in the process. Nina Bascon has the story. Taylor, a four-year-old English Springer Spaniel, puts her nose to the ground and sniffs around the wooded terrain in order to detect the iconic marsupial native to Australia, which has become one of the main victims of the vicious fires. Accompanied by her trainer Ryan Tate, the animal stops in her tracks next to trees where she detects the scent of a koala. The koalas are usually found clinging to a trunk several meters off the ground, and once Taylor has located one, the forest guards are able to rescue and move it out of harm's way. The white and brown spotted pooch has helped rescue at least 15 koalas in the eastern state of New South Wales since the forest fires broke out in September raising an area of land larger than the size of Ireland. The animal has been trained to prioritize the scent of the live animal and sit as close to it as she can. She comes from a litter of dogs who all work professionally to find animals including turtles, lizards and snakes. The pair is able to cover between 10 to 35 kilometers of forest each day. According to estimates by protectionist groups, forest fires have killed over 8,000 koalas, a species already classified as vulnerable and under threat from drought, diseases, and deforestation. 
Up to 1 billion animals, mainly mammals, birds and reptiles are estimated to have been affected by the devastating fires, according to Australian ecologists. Nina Bascon, UNTV News and Rescue, <laughs> Australia. <laughs> UNTV's Zajai visited Puerto Galera's signature drift diving site. Here's a glimpse of what's in store on Sunday's The Dive episode where Cindy Maduma will take you underwater with rich marine life and exhilarating water current. Let's watch this. The coast of Puerto Galera features diverse diving activities, one of which is drift diving. Drift diving is a scuba diving activity wherein a scuba diver swims along with a strong ocean current. It is advisable only to experienced divers or divers with certification levels from advanced open water. But why do scuba divers enjoy exhilarating drift dives? Usually, kung malakas nga yung current, marami kang makikitang big fish and other creatures dito. For the express reason na dahil maraming tubig na dumadaan doon, marami rin dinadala yung tubig, be it plankton or nekton or smaller fish eating the plankton ito. Usually, kung saan may current, nag attract na yan ng life. The dive team visited Puerto Galera's signature drift dive spot, the canyon's dive site. Divers can experience exhilarating, mild to strong ocean current. Going to the water in a little while. It's like five minutes boat ride from Scassy Divers, and I think everyone is prepared for their wonderful dive. There is a little bit of current, but I think it's a, it's a good thing because if there's current, there's fishes, there's pelagic. Bountiful pelagics can be seen in these dive sites, just like sweet lips, buffer fish giant trevally and colorful reef fishes rex medina a dive instructor and guide revealed there's a historic object resting in the canyon's dive site it's kind of like uh, the markings or you can say that uh, that's the only proof that you, you have been to the canyon discover this mysterious sighting in a drift diving adventure with cindy maduma and be mesmerized by the power of the ocean current, not only through drift diving, but also by appreciating the global ecosystem. On Sunday, 11 a.m., only in the dive. Wishers, the fifth Wish Music Awards is just around the corner. This year, the One Wish 107.5 Music Awards will recognize personalities who have given significant contributions to the thriving Filipino music industry. Here's why from Mirasol Abugadil. The long wait is over as the 5th Wish Music Awards happens on Sunday, January 19, 2020 at the Mall of Asia Arena. Over 60 acts are vying for awards in 18 categories at the WMA. The eligibility period is from November 1, 2018 to October 31, 2019. Votes from wishers will comprise 30% of a nominee's total score, while the remaining 70% will come from a select panel of judges. Polling period which started on December 16, 2019 ended today. As in the previous installments, the WMA will again give a cash prize of 25,000 pesos to the major award winners and 100,000 pesos to the winners' chosen beneficiaries. Apart from the major awards, Wishclusive Elite Circle Awards will also be given to honor acts whose Wishclusive videos have garnered at least 10 million views during the eligibility period. And this year, the 5th WMA will also pay tribute to industry heroes as two new special awards will be conferred. The two awards are named after the man behind Wish 1075, Kuya Daniel Rezon. 
First is the KDR Icon of Musical Excellence Award, which aims to recognize an industry luminary who has left an indelible mark in the music scene through exemplary contributions. The other is the KDR Icon of Music and Philanthropy Award. This shines the spotlight on a person or group that uses music to positively impact the life of others. Expect world-class performances at the 5th WMA from big names in the music industry like KZ Tandingan, Morissette, Moira, Julian San Jose, Ben and Ben, Four of Spades, and a lot more. Fast-rising American pop and R&B star AJ Mitchell will also give a special performance. Mirasol Abogadil, UNTV, News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news this January 17, 2020. On behalf of Angelo Castro III, I am William Theo. And before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. <laughs> I believe that uh, we should, uh, I strongly believe, or uh, recommend that uh, we strictly implement the suggestion or the recommendation that the, uh, the Tal Island will be the declared no man's land. Uh, ready to assist if there will be a need for massive resettlement, provided the LGUs can give us the lots where the uh, people will be inside. Sa aming panayam kay Yusek Renato Solidum, uh, kung mananatiling kalmado ang Bulkan Tal because it's come uh, right about now, kung ito ay tatagal ng dalawang linggo, maaari na nalilang ibaba ang alert level, hopefully to three or number two. That way, um, people can uh, go back to their regular lives and the uh, government can start rebuilding. Mga kababayan, ang atin pong kalagayan ngayon para po tayong nasa isang mundo na parang wala nang safe na lugar. Ang alam ko na lang na safe na lugar na matatakbuhan natin yung ating pagtitiwala sa Diyos. Sa Kawikaan 18, Jess. Ang pangalan ng Panginoon ay matibay na muog, tinatakbuhan ng matwid at naliligtas. Ang matatakbuhan mo lang ngayon na kung saan kami roong proteksyon ay ang pangalan ng Panginoon.